friends the very best morning to everyone uh indeed it is a great pleasure for me to extend on behalf of cosmo board warm welcome with open arms to all participants for this coming to our today's session well today's subject is on to take a look at export business of control panel today's speaker is a best in class very much our own member from delhi and uh, cmd of format Mr. K. S. Baduria ji, Baduria ji. Yes, sir. Format is a very reputed and well-known bus bar support manufacturer, and various other component also they make and export globally. With this customary welcome address, I now go with uh, folded hands before you all with huge thanks from the core of my heart. Lastly, big thanks to all Cosma committee board and uh, members who are working very hard to make these meetings happen. Special thanks to Kadir sir and all participating senior people and members of Cosma for giving motivation and inspiration and encouragement to all of us at Cosma. I uh, request Madhuri ji to give brief introduction about Power Mat and uh, take the matter forward. Thank you, Anand. Now Thank over you. to Madhuri sir. Thank you, Sanjeev ji. Actually, if, uh, as an introduction, we started uh, this uh, power mat somewhere around 80s, 19, uh, 1990, you can say, 89 or 90. After that, uh, we started uh, manufacturing bus bar supports at a very small scale. Uh, more, uh, more about that, uh, my good friend is not there. Mr. Vijay Sahita will tell you about my progress. I will not go into that very much. He's a very close uh, family friend, and uh, I know him since 1985. Too, you know, we have uh, started our this uh, bus bar support manufacturing on a uh, you can say area of about 100 square feet, and uh, in 1990. Then presently we are making another. At present, we are having about 80 or 90,000 square feet of covered space. Then making another plant now which is, will be having a covered area of about 200,000 square feet, about 2 lakh square feet and all, with a total area of about 6 acres of land. That will be in operation by, say, next uh, January or February. So out of that, actually, uh, we have started somewhere exporting in 1992. The first country to export was uh, Thailand. I've been to Thailand there, and then, of course, this is a different story. I'll take up that matter in a marketing aspect, how we started our marketing. That's a different story. We are, as far as insulators are concerned, we are manufacturing about uh, 1 crore 70 lakh insulators a year, uh, about 50,000, 60,000 insulators per day, and exporting to about 80 countries world over. Uh, we have a famous saying in our company that uh, if you know a country name, we are exporting. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> right from Australia, um, um, Austria, to Zaire, to Zimbabwe, to Chile, uh, you name the country we are exporting. Uh, some of the countries name which you may not have heard of, small island type countries and all. Anyhow. Uh, now we start actually when I was given this task of uh, um, giving a lecture on exports. Firstly, uh, as you know, power mat, uh, these insulators are a component, whereas I have to give a lecture on an equipment, which is uh, though totally a new field, but let us say, I, I thought, let me see what best I can do to the best of my capabilities. So read something, talk to some of our uh, um, panel builders in USA, like uh, um, to some of um, my close friends in Germany, manufacturing panels, then some in UK, like uh, Mardix, is a good company in Mardix in UK, then um, uh, one company in Ireland, and all and then one company in USA and all. I've talked to different people. And then I've told, I've asked them a simple question. What do you think about control panel manufacturing in India? As a outside view. 
So they say, basically, everybody is of the opinion that we are basically not following the world standards. Everybody is following, whether it is Germany or USA or even in Thailand or Malaysia and all that, and uh, uh, even um, in Indonesia. Anyhow, that is beside the point. That's a marketing. I'll come to quality after that. Then while studying these, um, if I say what countries are exporting, because first of all, if we have to export, we have to see what other countries are doing. Like I have some data which I have collected, uh, which says that export by countries. And uh, I was surprised that uh, in that India figures at about four or five million dollars a year. Whereas if we see Germany export of panels is 9.79 billion dollars. Total export to world, world over total exports is about 40 billion dollars. Out of that, it is Germany is exporting about uh, 10, million, 10 billion dollars. China is exporting 10 billion dollars. Then uh, Mexico is exporting about 5 billion dollars. U.S. is exporting about $5 billion. Japan is exporting about $3 billion, so on and so forth. Whereas in India, we are hardly at 4 or $5 billion. So it's not even it is not worth mentioning. And that also, I think, by some multinational companies, maybe ABB or Schneider or Siemens and all that. Now in that, then, this is the figure that if you want, I can give you the figures and all, not an issue. Then next, our next, uh, my next target was who are the importers? Now, these are the exporters. Now, who are the importers? Well, again, I've reached to a figure. Then US is exporting about uh, $12 billion of uh, uh, control panels with an advanced economy like US. And US is importing about $12 billion. It was a surprise to me. There are a lot of panel builders and all with a $30 trillion economy. Then Germany also is importing. Seven billion dollar Germany and China is importing about four to five billion dollars, and then France also is importing about two billion dollars and all. Then Mexico about two billion dollars. Then after that comes is Malaysia or uh, uh, sorry uh, this uh, Malaysia, Indonesia, etc. Total uh, import is about again same import and export as to match effect as to match so is about 40, 45 billion dollars totally. Then. I have these two. Then another thing is what is the ratio of uh, exports and imports to total total imports? So this control panel it ranks about 45th most traded product in the world. This control electrical control panels. So th that's a overall scenario of this. So when we say that nobody is importing, like I said, uh, US is importing about $12 billion of control panels with the advanced economy, must be importing from either Germany or China and all. So at this point, uh, I say that, and then I compare it with India. Why we are not able to do? Then again, the question comes to why. Why we are not able to do? Because then I've discussed this aspect with some of my friends worldwide who are actually Panel builders like an odd markets, I know their MD and all personally very well. Then he says one thing that in India there is a problem. Like Mardix, if we say Mardix, Mardix is supplying to Amazon data centers world over. They are supplying to India also. Whatever Amazon centers are coming in India, Mardix is supplying. Mardix is the UP company. They are supplying to data centers and all. They say that problems are there that we are basically not following world standards. World standards what? Like uh, UL508A, uh, Mr. Ramani must have studied that. <laughs> I don't know. Then IEC 60204 is there. Then IEC 61439, one and two. At this point, I will say that a lot of people have got their uh, Panels testified for 61439, one and two. But how many of them are adhering to the exact standards? We got it tested, then supply whatever we want. We have a certificate that's there. Then 
Another standard which comes into play, CE, uh, this for Europe and all, then for Europe, uh, then REACH is there and ROSE is there. Then there are different uh, regional standards like SABS for Saudi Arabia and GHOST and all. We have to go to export to a particular, that is my basic thing here is to export to a particular country we have to adopt international standards as well as their local standards. Like we have to adopt to UL 508A and then for Saudi Arabia, SABS also, because without that, they cannot import. So, uh, hello. Hello. Somebody asked a question there. Uh, no, sir. I think it was unmuted by mistake from them side. I request That's everybody it. to keep mute uh, unless you're speaking. Uh, Badurya ji, continue, please. Uh, yeah. So our basic question is here, if we have to export at this point, if we have to export, we have to follow strictly the world standards. What world standards? UL certifications, UL 94V0, certain other standards like IEC and other standards, you know. Uh, without that, we cannot export. So then, first thing is uh, export of different countries. Another thing is import by different countries. Then third is quality aspect, which is a very important aspect. If we don't follow those standards, we cannot export at all. Forget about exporting. There are a lot of standards. Uh, apart from that also, there are so many other standards and all. Uh, if you go through the site and all, you will come to know. And uh, whenever you are uh, going in for that um, exports and all, they will always ask you what standards. Like I say in um, Europe, uh, REACH standard, uh, ROHS compliance standard, or C markings and all. C marking is a system marking, so that's not an issue. So other standards and all. Then later standards have come up in Europe. Uh, I'm forgetting the name. It's for railway standard. When there is a fire in the railway, I think I see something. I, I can tell you about that. At present, we are in the process of certifying our product for that also. Because if in case of a fire, fumes should not be there, the component or everything should be halogen free so that the safety of the people uh, should not be compromised. So, so likewise, there are so many other standards and all. Then uh, then comes then I just see the notes and So before uh, going in for any export business, as I've said earlier, we have to go in for different quality standards and whether, whether we can adhere to those standards completely and explicitly. There are no two, uh, 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 these things are that, whether some of this uh, we can adhere and some are not. Oh, this is a, there is no two about that. We have to adhere to all standards of uh, UL as well as IEC and as well as some European standards and all, whether we are exporting to any country. Like if we come to standards, uh, let me give you an example. If you go to any KFC or uh, uh, MACD and all, you will find whatever we are eating here in India. Same potato chips or finger fry we are eating in US or maybe in China or maybe in Malaysia and all. Why it is so? Because they have a standard of potato. It should be that much size. This is go and this is no go. So those type, they, KFC, why it is popular, why uh, they are having different, because they have standardized everything, right from procurement to uh, how they are fried and they, at what temperature they are fried, X, Y, Z. So this is all, whether we are eating KFC or MACD in India, 
or elsewhere in the world, the taste will be absolutely same. So those type of standards are to be followed. This is a simple example of what is standard there. Then another thing which comes to marketing is there are some, as uh, Mr. Anand have also told in the beginning of the meeting that there has to be 10 or 15, consortium of 10 or 15 panel builders who will be like to export and all. I fully agree because the, my next point is the economy of scale, which is very important. If all of us, 10 people or five people or 15 people are doing it at different levels and all, then economy of the scale doesn't come up. Economy of scale comes up that uh, we can compete anywhere in the world because we are making 1.7 crores of insulators every year, day in and day because that is economy of scale. So that economy of scale is required. Either some company in India is sufficient enough to go in for economy of scale, depending on their export, or four or five or 10 people combined together, as Mr. Anand has said. Mr. Ramani will explain you in detail in some other meetings, you know. That is also required because economy of scale will give you one or two things. Quality, quality as well as your uh, uh, competitiveness. Otherwise, your competitiveness will never come if economy of scale is not there. Then, one of the last things here is, uh, I move on to here, marketing aspect of that. Uh, customer identification. Now, how do you identify the customer? Let me go back to our initial years in exports, 1992. At that time, internet was not there. Information technology was not there at all. Then how we have exported? In 1991, actually, we have realized that in India, there are a lot of local competitions. Everyone wants a cheap product and all. Um, uh, um, this uh, value-wise cheap products. Then we thought at that time, okay, let us export. But then how to export? We do not have anything. Then in those times, I was the only one doing marketing and all. So I used to go to different embassies in Delhi, Malaysian embassy or this uh, US embassy, and then, then also go to US libraries and all to find out more and then get the names and all of the persons, uh, panel builders and other things and all. So that way, now, that's a, that's a history. Uh, we don't have to go in for that. Or well, that's a marketing of a bag and a laptop and all, not, not laptop, bag and a briefcase at that time. So that's a different thing, but now things have changed. Now, how? Now, how do we market this? Then, we have to identify, number one, identify the countries which is of interest to us or which are slightly below the line of development. But how to find that? Very easy. Go to any of the world site and all, find out what is their GDP. Leave aside first 10, take another 10. Targeted approach, you have to go in for targeted. First, uh, first 10, leave aside Germany or France and all that thing. Go another 10. Down the line, just see the GDP and just see the growth rates. With those two parameters, you will find out who is the countries who are progressing. After that, what is the need? Then we have to find out, you identify the country. And then target country-wise. Don't target haphazardly. It's no use haphazardly. And then remember one thing. You may appoint a, uh, some IT girl and all and expert in email because now email is the word. And just shoot out letters without caring whether you are getting the results and all. Because results percentage of email marketing is 
in control panel line or in any other line should be not more than 0.5 percent. If you mail thousand mails or two thousand mails of prospective customers, now here the word comes prospective customers. What are the prospective customers? I've already told you. Identify the countries. How to identify the countries? Maybe leave aside first seven or eight or ten countries, then move to next ten, and then move to next ten, and then move to next ten. Everybody, every every country in the world requires panel builders, panels for their use. No denying the fact. Then we have to see like. Uh, and like I'll give you an example, African countries, they may be having a shortage of electricity and all. Their best bet to go in for electricity will be solar. But there is a lot of solar, about 325 days in a year is the solar. Sun is coming down. So they may be coming out or some foreign companies will be coming out to launch uh, these solar panels or then certain advanced countries uh, down the line, maybe EV charging stations. We are supplying to basically all these segments, you know. So that is then we, what we have to do. Now we have identified the countries. Now the next question comes, how to identify the segments? Same thing, what you are doing here. Nothing more, nothing less. You have to identify what are the customer segments you are dealing. Maybe uh, consumer, some con consumer industry, uh, uh, some construction industries is there. Then some factories like sugar, sugar plants, oil wells, etc. Then chemical plants and all you have to see. Then data centers, of course, data centers are going to come in developed countries only, like maybe India or elsewhere. But Every country will be requiring data centers of their own in near future and or in another five to 10 years. The data centers are going to come in each and every country of their own. India is also trying to have data centers of their own. Like maybe Tata will be doing it because data centers means information. No country wants to share information or data. Like at present data centers, most of the data centers are located in the US. But India doesn't want that their data should be stored in um, US. So data centers are to be made in India. Very shortly, in another five year time, India will be having a lot of data centers from which your local uh, uh, sales will be coming. Then of course, another is railways and solar plants and EV chargers and all. You have to identify these areas and just see what are the companies who are either um, this uh, consultants or contractors? There will be big contractors in every country. There are big contractors, you know. So, like that, the best course of action at present, and which is which is a, at that time about 20, 30 years back, uh, marketing um, this. Uh, was very difficult and uh, costly affair, sending catalogs, other things and all. But now it is not so. You can send everything by email. Next day, it will be there on the desk of a person. Only thing is you have to identify the segment areas and the per right person concerned. That's more important. Otherwise, it, the, your message will be simply deleted. Rest assured that uh, the response will be about not more than 0.5 to 1% somewhere in between. Now, from this point onward, anybody, uh, like is another half an hour is there. So uh, anybody is having any questions at this time? Let us open the debate now. Uh, sir, uh, before going forward, uh, yeah. uh, uh, let us have the uh, second speaker also. Yes. And then uh, anybody can ask the questions in total for, for both the speakers. Right. Okay. Ah, so, uh, uh, Manish, can you uh, continue with your uh, lecture? Uh, will you please? Yeah, fine. Yeah, please. Yeah, yeah. Introduce I'll yourself shortly. first and yeah. then start. Yes. Yeah, my name is Manish Vora, and my company also is uh, the same year of birth like Cosma. I think Cosma shows 1988, 
and i started my business in 1988 though i was in 13 uh, 12 or 13 standard that time so that the same birth uh, coincide with the cosma and uh, thank you anand ji and uh, i uh, thank all the members and who are here on the cosma panel uh, mm-hmm. thanks for having me here first of all i think uh, mainly i think baduria ji has uh, being a stalwart and being what he is is exports and all he has covered the points which are very useful to how to export and all these things i really appreciate his approach and his sharing of things where these are the points are to be looked after very properly so that you can succeed in export the next point after that comes in is how you are going to export what are the things will be involved where mr baduria ji also needs help where he gets stuck little bit by the policy matters concerning import export there what we come in like and also we could share the statistics also like these are also available now which are government of india statistics as well world statistics also you can get so basically what we are doing is starting from abcd like an having an export import number to start the things to start kicking from to the end of it where you get the benefit and all those things so mainly what uh, baduria ji has also said that exporting countries importing and standards and all the fourth thing would i think is important also for all is the incentives which government of india gives to exporters the okay. incentives are break up into two three parts like that first thing is like uh, if you know, okay uh, uh, i think uh, first thing would be like if you are doing some fob export what are the percentages so now it has come to 2 or 3% of the incentive that is an import license which you get from the dgft but now that has changed to the customs now it keeps on evolving and now it's customs who gives that so that is one part where on your fob export 2 3% you will get and this is all transferable so the importers need that for their duties or also you can also utilize for your imports the same license so that you can get a double benefit like not sharing it and so around if it is 2 to 3% so 90% of that is your incentive so that you can count it to make it yourself very competitive also and uh, take it in your cost also so that the benefits what you are going to get other thing what i'd like to say is when baduria ji said about the standards and quality to be maintained i think here i have not gone deep into your thing but i understand that whenever you say about some standards you need some quality capital good machinery and for that having that maintain that standard you will need that capital goods which are available here or abroad where we will have the best standard of machineries which you can import and this import can be effected by epcg scheme like where you will get it at basic duty can be zero when you give a commitment of six times the export of that machinery whatever duty you are saving of that machinery and all so that would be another very big incentive for all members to understand that you can import machinery duty free still now also by a uh, epcg that is capital gain import and that licenses has to be there and a commitment of six times the export what you have saved on that so that other thing comes in and third thing would be where we could help out is say policy matters concerning the ministry of commerce dgft delhi and everywhere say when baduria ji said manish one thing is 1% something where you can represent it to the dgft and this ministry six of times, commerce this, sorry to disturb you six yeah, yeah, time sir. export is one financial year no it gives you 3 to 4 years to do that it okay, gives you a okay. sizable amount of period to do okay. effect your export against your import of machinery machinery okay. will come under that and you will have to open an account with dgft where you will show them and all export will be counted against that epcg okay. saying okay. that yeah you are uh, fulfilling your commitment year by year 3 to 5 years they give that and also one year extra can be given so all okay. that can be represented and so said that and the fourth thing what i was talking about is a policy matters where see some incentives are there but being cosma and you can represent saying what are your difficulties you are facing and what incentive more you want from the government saying that say yeah yeah the incentive should be in, increased so that you become more competitive because as baduria ji said that 4 to 5 million you are exporting in a market of 40 million it's a long way off that so there is a very big space there and since you are knowing this year india exported 400 billion dollars so we are competitive now but yeah the conscious comes about your quality and your standards and your iso or ce or whatever certifications are there that could be looked into so these things i think are there but uh, that for my picture comes in where i would able to help you in all other policy related matters import matters exporting matters how to do that and 
then how you could become more competitive and you can really start a, i think export every company should have a export thing where yeah 30 40% should go to export because that would have a value addition and also more incentive to make yourself more competitive and more profitable so that's what where i come in so that's what i, I have and if you have any queries or anything you can really contact me maybe in my chat or mr anand ji also could help uh, giving my numbers and email id i'll put it in the chat so anytime you want i am there to help you out and see how we could work it out that way so that's what it is uh, thank you very much for having me that's what my brief is i think yeah sir so maybe a question answer whoever has we can take it that up yeah yes sir thank you mute 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 hai aapka sir mute nikal dijiye सर आपका म्यूट निकाल दीजिए संजीव सर म्यूट निकाल दीजिए मनीष जी आई हैव अ क्वेश्चन फॉर यू दैट इज आर एक्सपोर्टिंग लिटिल परसेंटेज ऑफ आवर प्लेटफॉर्म या सर योर वॉइस ब्रोक ब्रेक एक्चुअली लिटिल या व्हाट यू आर सेइंग अबाउट 5 6 फ्लोर्स ऑफ रुपीस एक्सपोर्ट वी डू इयरली राइट सर इन दैट वी डोंट गेट एनी बेनिफिट दैट बेसिकली वी आर डूइंग इट थ्रू थर्ड पार्टीज एक्चुअली द प्रोजेक्ट कॉन्ट्रैक्टर्स और समथिंग लाइक दैट we don't charge mm -hmm. them gst and then uh, they give a proof of export and then that is the end of it we don't we are not heard any incentives in such things yeah the, the third party sir the party who is taking from you mm -hmm. is taking the incentive sir okay we can't take the incentive because exports are going in his name export should be in your name so that you could claim that incentives okay. so better off would be if he is exporting the same you could be also doing but yeah you can do certain portion there but whenever it comes to your name only na then only the incentives are there if he shows in his shipping bill saying that he has exported again that export incentive not a so, uh, so only for direct export uh, this is up yeah sir yeah yeah sir and direct uh, exports or deem export also can happen can i help you yeah i yes sir please hello yes yeah, sir so sanjeev in case you are doing the indirect export you are getting a better price so incentive is set up against that because whenever i have exported uh, through somebody the price was more or less indian price local price but when you want to export then you have to kind of reduce your price also shipping price am i right manish yes yes yeah, sir it's a two way thing actually it's a two way thing it's not that uh... if uh, that person is one person one more is coming in between and exporting so you can do it if you wet as what mr baduria ji is doing actually the goal should be to having your own export sir own export third party export definitely it should be there where you feel yes you are getting sizable profit and sizable thing it should be there but that should not be the sole criteria saying that i i should be not be exporting actually you should have the focus that you should be the one like mr baduria ji to export it yourself because that would give you all future contracts also maybe in one or two contracts you might not earn that much but definitely in future you are going to get bigger clients with mr baduja says that since that ev chargers and all those industries which are coming up they are all new players many big startups are there many other things are there where you can contact them directly and definitely you can earn more money out of him and get more incentive and being your export and your brand name that would also make a very big difference i feel so so it's a two way thing but main focus should be that i should be exporting i should have that things in my hand because future also whatever benefits comes in it's are going top sheet up and down also but it goes on going so i think it would help you both the ways it would help you to identify also the yeah, your product is working your product is exported by a third party so there is a very big incentive here that you should be focusing that yeah your product is acceptable and uh, you should try to do it yourself also along with what uh, or errors you are getting i am not saying you should not leave the orders you should be doing that but do your other speed work also i feel so yes yeah, sir uh, if i can just add uh, manish ji yeah, correct yeah. me if i am wrong uh, yes yeah, sir these kind of indirect uh, exports what uh, sanjeev bhai is doing will yeah. qualify for the uh, epcg scheme where you are importing a, a, a foreign uh, machinery and you are yeah. uh, uh, you know offsetting the Uh, sales against the uh, purchase am i right you will have, uh, no you will have to get an noc oh. from him claim that he is not going to claim and he is not going to put up these records so yes. it can't be two persons having the same export accounted for the government of india like so mm -hmm. you have to get an noc from him so then you can 
claim it here also see that this has been exported like a deem export or a third party export it would be counted but uh, your name should be there but noc should be needed in that case to okay. solve that thing from that one that he will be not be claiming anything and all those things then only you could claim here that it's a, like a one shipping bill having one uh, one owner of it to claim for that acha i there is one question from yeah. two questions from me uh, before uh, anybody goes further uh hello see, there are uh, there are big panel manufacturers uh, already in this uh, seminar and uh, individually bhadura sir ke liye aap uh, ek question hai sir bhadura ji ha bataiye ha see basically uh, jo chhota itna export jo ho raha hai apna uska uh, reason aisa hai ki many of us are an msmes not uh, above 50 crores or 100 crores so uh, and the panel manufacturing is a, a bit a tailor made type of a thing so whenever the requirement do come uh, it is a tailor made requirement it is not that much standardized one correct so uh, to go and show the product somewhere out uh, out of india is very difficult so uh, if we make a syndicate or collaborative effort of a uh, team Uh, and uh, represent as a, to the outer world as a bunch of uh, control panel manufacturer having different 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 sections for different 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 areas like sugar factory then somebody for construction and somebody for so it's a combined group suppose we make it a forward as a export group uh, uh, that that way uh, we can have two uh, benefits one is uh, out of that ten only one has to spend to go somewhere uh, in a particular country and come back so that amount can be shared by all 10 so jaane ka aane ka jo paisa hai wo bach jayega then um, you can have a scaling of your business that means uh, jo agar 1000 crore ka order hai to usme se 10 ne to 50 log usme se share karke ek hi combined order hum log le sakte hai aisa pehla to possible hai because aero hai ramni ji hai udhar ritesh bhi udhar pe aaye hai bahut sare log hai udhar bade bade log hai to आनंद जी उसके लिए तो यू हैव टू वर्क ऑन बिकॉज देन इट विल बिकम ए कंसोर्टियम ऑफ फाइव और टेन पैनल बिल्डर्स एंड देन इट विल बिकम दैट टेन पैनल बिल्डर्स बिकम ब्रांच ऑफ दोज दैट बिग कंपनी टू गेट एक्सपोर्ट इंसेंटिव और एन टू एक्सपोर्ट दैट टाइप बट वेदर दैट विल बी फिजिबल और नॉट मिस्टर रमनी इज द बेस्ट पर्सन to advise on that whether to combine 10 panel builders and then quote on behalf of that company because you have to go in as a company yes <coughs> yeah, i mean it's it's honestly uh, since you asked uh, uh, my opinion is that it is not for us to decide whether it is possible or not possible i think uh, it is the customer who has to really decide whether uh, he is comfortable dealing with a consortium so uh, if uh, cosma can uh, you know uh, do a good job uh, go, do a good spade work of uh, putting this consortium together that could be one one option second is that there has to be one leader who will take the responsibility and uh, take this opportunity forward i don't know whether there has been precedence of such things in the world anywhere uh to me there is uh, sorry sorry ramani there is yes. no precedence of such things in the world ha but uh, i have a suggestion here ha uh, while listening to you uh, it simply strikes me why does cosma take this responsibility of marketing the products on behalf of different thing let it be a marketing company and then if they get inquiry and all then distribute it and then that panel will whoever is comfortable and then uh, they get it it will be a simply a marketing information company nothing else no finance is nothing right. it's a possible it's a possible setup uh, badul ji can we have a question from dipesh dipesh will actually raise a hand yeah, yeah 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 dipesh uh, please go ahead yeah yeah uh, my question is uh, to mr uh, manish ji uh, regarding yes, the state party export what about gst 18 percentage we can give it uh, one percentage against some documents or Point one percent. It's point one percent. Yeah, yeah. Uh, any yeah. documents uh, related to that? Uh, we need. We need to submit because we are not uh, directly exporting. We are uh, billing, invoicing to somebody else, the third party. Hmm. No, the third party will give you that he has exported. That was true. Yeah, they will give you the proof of that. 
they will give you the proof of that and then you have to submit with that your gst returns yes. and all that's it point 1% so it will be counted yeah yeah it will be counted like earlier it used to be h form now they will give ah. you proof of export yeah. that you have to attach with your sales invoice mm -hmm. and maintain the record just uh, proof of export shall be maintained maintained okay thank you and nowadays shipping charge also increase i think <laughs> don't talk about that shipping <laughs> charge of, from, from here to us earlier shipping charge of a 40 bit container was $8000 and all even oh. uh, day before yesterday i booked to 40 bit containers the charge is given by shafel and then another company one very big company given them $18000 to uh, new york uh, without guarantee of lifting the material so i have asked somebody okay give me guarantee how much you are going to charge he says 2000 dollars extra <laughs> <laughs> so shipping is like that presently <laughs> they are charging now 20 feet container earlier it was 2000 or 3000 dollars now it is 13000 dollars plus you have to uh, some shipping line and all to get the guarantee and all you have to bribe him for 2000 dollars more so that makes fifteen thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, sir. Uh, uh, before going to the question and answers uh, ahead, uh, it's a generalized question. He, yeah. uh, uh, fundamentally, you summarize like that. He, uh, if you have got a perfect standards as per the uh, international laws or international standards, and uh, export is easy or it is a prerequisite to export. First of all, then yeah. you have to go for uh, total countries data. And you have to consultate uh, not on embassies but on the direct countries nowadays. So Correct. Is the, and the uh, first ten uh, you have to just leave, and you have to go for next ten for the GDP. Now uh, mm -hmm. let us take an example. Suppose of Aero Engineer Sanju sir. Unko hi hamlog pehle ek example karke pakhenge because he is only exporting five crores out of his. Uh, that means only five percent or three uh, percent of his total turnover. Yes. Now, but uh, while exporting, he suppose he wants to export because the market outside is very big and definitely not competitive, but you, you can get more money out of it. That is what my experience is. So if you are selling at X price, you can get 1.3 or 1.4 percent while you are exporting. Uh, uh, Ananji, Ananji, wait a minute. Here I will give you our data. Our uh, eight our we are exporting about 65 percent 65 to 70 percent of our exports uh -huh. out of a total turnover about 75 crores total uh -huh. turnover yes. 75 70 75 percent is exports yeah but uh, okay uh, but yes. our profit sharing uh -huh. if we bifurcate the profit 95 percent of the profit comes from export and five percent from local Yes, that is what I am what to say. So that I'll, I'll give you the data of i I am giving you the data of 20, 21, 22 year of our company because we have already made the balance sheet. Our sales is closed. Exactly. That means we get more profit while we export. Yes. Right? Yes. yes. And it, yes. it should it should be not less than one point three per one point hundred and thirty percent. So, Abhi arrow, arrow as an example, uh, Sanju sir, uh, what is uh, what is restricting you uh, to uh, not to do the export, uh, Sanju sir? Over to you. Uh, okay, I'm mute. Okay. Uh -huh. That is basically uh, we are not in position to identify countries, identify customer, go to them, reach them, all that kind of no, uh, no. work which we have to do that we are not doing. Then so, Sanjeev ji, Sanjeev so ji, you can, you can identify the country, you can identify the country of export, the time he gives you a certification of, because you must be supplying at 0.1%. So he has to give you a uh, shipping bill or bill of lading and uh, proof of export. In that proof of export, it comes. Yeah, country of origin. Country of origin and country of loading. Of loading. Giving yeah. Achha, Manish, yes. uh, now yes, uh, this question connected to you again. Now there is a yeah. Sanju sir who is a president of Cosma and right. he, has, uh, he is having all the standards and even Ramni sir is also there who are having mm. all the international standards. But still mm. uh, Sanjeev is not uh, exporting just because he don't know the data and don't know how to mm. export. So uh, mm. can you be of any help to our members by guiding uh, as a consultancy uh, for all mm. these things? Is it possible for you? Is it there in your bucket? Yeah, we can do that in the sense of see, first is that statistics are available, which are freely available, also paid statistics as well as 
by hs code number mm-hmm. and which country it is being exported so you will yeah. get a brief from india what is being exported and which is the hss code means there are i suppose many categories of say your conductors insulators petrol panels whatever you are exporting is that all the hs code so we can get that statistics first of all so you will get a brief here yeah, what uh, baduria ji said how to concentrate so that how you will be able to concentrate first other things what you will need to do is yes you have to keep hammering you have to keep your uh, flow going embassy still are there they are still having all the libraries like the us uh, library is there at new marine lines uh, the british library is there where the business part also is there and there are data from there also so things have to be done and another the major thing what you were saying about consortium sorry to put in uh, one more word in that i feel that what you should cosma can do is also take up the big fairs coming up of your industries abroad and cosma being there can work with the baduria said she said that yeah you can filter that orders and then spread it out that yeah whoever is able to do that and uh, give it at a price or whatever you can then work it out among yourself and then put up that orders so cosma can do one thing is like other chinese companies and chinese industries are doing where you find their own associations like the germans are also having their association at all the fairs so it would be competitive yes. for uh, all of you also and uh, it will help you to get orders so cosma can become a magneting factor well he where you all can give it among all of yourself like how you could not to limit it to 5 or 10 but maybe the all of you can have a on that when when the exports comes in or the new orders comes in or whatever new inquiry comes in so i feel that could also be done so many things are to be there where you need a dedicated person also where you concentrated on exports also so and incentive part and this part both are correlated but that could help but yeah you have to focus when you have a, a power mate maduria ji what he is saying also you should be listening to his word what he has said right now stating that uh, 75% of my export are there and 95% of my profit is from export so i think all you should now from day one right now you should be shifting your focus to exports because that would help you to gain what mr baduria ji has done over the years definitely it is going to be a few years down the line but you have to start somewhere to make it happen we can't say that yeah with uh, mr sanjeev ji also is saying yeah i have limitations i have not done my thing how to do that but yeah that is what it is and that is what both of you means mr paduria ji myself and many of means like that we could make up thing happen and see that indian exports grow up and your industry goes up where it is 40 billion is lying there actually if germany can do it if japan can do it and uh, us can do it why can't we and if you need any machinery we can import that what they are doing is with machinery only so we can do and with that and when your manual is there we are export that, that actually at yes, the time uh, i'll put up yeah. a word uh, in yes, india uh, we were uh, for 800 years uh, uh, we were basically previously moguls then britishers and all yes yes so in our mind is there we are afraid of basically we are what we are doing we are basically afraid of this white skin and yellow skin yes so that fear yes. fear of skin should not be there we are brilliant enough okay i'll yes. give you an example it's not me around 2004 i think i was traveling from vienna to uh, some place about 200 miles down the line some uh, this there uh, we have hired a car van and all send the driver because the distance journey was about 2 3 hours so he told me you are from india said yeah i said yes i am from india the yeah so you must be from it line it is 2004 <laughs> no 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 i am not in it line so he said then what you why you are saying that no no indians are brilliant people they can do anything if you if they like yes. that's exactly his words yes the things what i'm saying is the things what i see when i was travel used to travel in 92 and i used to travel in 94 2004 and then you used to travel in 2010 and now of course things have changed yes 
earlier there was a concept whatever india india is making it's rubbish but now, now rubbish. that concept that mindset has been changed because of it industry right so we have to basically consolidate on that the mindset of different countries and the people now nobody says that we cannot manufacture quality whether we mm. can manufacture it or not that's a different issue we can get it done yes then for any exports any exporting country or exporting person a feeling of nationality has to be there because yes. when that feeling of nationality is not there you can never export it forget about export so two or three things are there we have to cash in on it industry image then a feeling of nationality now yeah, manish sir. will, manish will uh, uh, yes sir i definitely 100% agree with you sir the feeling of nationalism and the feeling right now what you are saying i also visited china five times and uh, other countries also for so that time also i used to find like you being so early also same way i also tried and went there people were really negating us like say indians okay okay get us that but now when i also visited 2 3 years ago to germany and uh, uk and all you i tell you when you they saw na, at at the fair okay the, this is an indian there is now a definite different feeling saying yeah these are this is a buyer these are genuine mm. buyer now means mm, the feeling has really changed by also mr modi ji what he has really spread it out india has a very big play now and indians are considered very good provided we have the confidence we have our goods properly made and doing it to that standard and we are capable and manufacturing that's why the export has gone to 400 billion in just Correct. one year Correct. one year so mm. this is the time and this is the thing where you should be doing and you have a prime example here i keep on repeating baduria because this is what is required of every indian to do we can compete in any field i feel not only it and now people know india and people want a very big alternative to china they are not ready to buy that if you provide them the proper quality and price and also some price also will be compromised when you feel you will able to do that that would happen i forgot so this is the right time right opportunity so uh, i think india's best place right now to take his rightful place in world exports also what china did 15 years back we can do it this is now our 10 years i feel this is india's 10 15 years we will be able to prove that sir and yeah. we should have that nationalism and pride and see that we don't uh, do anything which will spoil the name of india so that that feeling would help you to give your product a better uh, leverage and being got a commitment also so that's what things are there i think and people are listening at every level at the commerce level also whatever level you want whatever backup you want government is ready to give provided you give them proper data and proper presentation and proper thing that yeah you please give us this support we will able to export more and that would really go through this time round without more bribing also we have seen i have seen a lot of bribing here but that has also decreased to a very lo low level now policy matters and doing by the policy would help sir i think so that's what i feel and uh, all should now should concentrate on export and see that uh, you have that thing in that so it would help you in a long run definitely sir very big way can we take a yes. question from tarun bhai yeah. tarun bhai uh thank uh, thank you uh, thank you sir you sir and good morning to all uh we were having a very important uh, point and as uh, mr an said that we can uh, uh, we can uh, 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 make a consultorium and mr uh, manish uh, had taken now my point i wanted to say if uh, cosma as a consultorium participate in uh, germany fair participate in uh, dubai fair or gulf country fairs or uh, african countries fairs and there we give we tell them the people that we have the manufacturers with us of such capabilities and we display our capabilities over there we and cosma as a association such a large association be the uh, behind the like uh, one uh, strength of all these people we will have a very good opportunity and business uh, will definitely flow to us this is i actually i wanted to say and it is it is really very important 
if because it is not uh, possible for everyone to go go and participate in exhi uh, every exhibitions but it is very easy to go as a association this is i wanted to say yeah thank you no, actually uh, uh, that's a valid point that's a good point actually by mr tarun yeah again the same point is coming up about the consortium how it has to be done we'll discuss later but to be done is more important so i think ramni ji uh, we can uh, gather at least how and kaise uh, wagera sab detail baad mein discuss karenge but the people who are at least having standards international standards like cul or whatever the standards required or ic 61439 wagera jo jo log hai unka ek ikatta hum log agar for exports नॉलेज शेयरिंग टाइप का कंसोर्टियम भी शुरू में चालू करेंगे एंड मनीष ओरा जी को हम लोग कंसल्टेंट वही कमेटी पे ले लेंगे और जो ऑलरेडी आर एक्सपोर्टर्स उनको भी हम लोग वो कमेटी पे ले लेंगे और कंसोर्टियम में ले लेंगे तो आई थिंक द नॉलेज शेयरिंग एट टू बी स्टार्ट विथ विल हेल्प टू ऑल तो इधर से हम लोग शायद उसकी मीटिंग चालू कर सकते हैं और सबको उसका फायदा हो सकता है रमणी जी वॉट इज yeah it's a good idea uh, anand uh, there are a lot of uh, aspects like what sanjeev was saying that uh, the reason why he is not uh, into exports is because he doesn't know how to go about it he doesn't know where to find the customer segments he doesn't understand you know uh, uh, the abcd of uh, going about the whole thing like uh, one very uh, good uh, tip which bahadurya sahab had given is that he went to and found out the various countries gdp which is less than india and at the same time the growth rate is uh, quite significant now these are certain hints which uh, one needs to pursue and uh, try and understand where to target and this is very very critical another aspect of what uh, bahadurya sahab does is that he has focused his entire business only on panel board accessories he is that kind of a focus is very important when one has to go to exports because ultimately people look at value what they are getting from uh, their imports the third aspect which i would like uh, to invite mr manish vora to uh, you know share with us a little bit more is that in my experience uh, the area where i have benefited a lot is by putting the hsn code of uh, what we are supplying into softwares like uh, dollarbusiness.com or panjiva.com and in from these softwares we are able to get a complete list of uh, uh, customers who are importing safe panel enclosures from india you know and then when you go into that they give you entire details of what is the value they have imported with from whom they have imported everything is available now for a person like sanjeev that could be a good start uh, mr manish yeah i feel yeah that is one of the points and main point also hsn code would give you that thing along with that other things are to be followed this thing is there which will help you to kick start it and then slowly and steadily you will have to uh, explore all the areas like what i said about the export fires also where you will get a bulk uh, things are there now and same way other embassies everything has to be worked out in a synchronized manner and then you will get a full view and you will have areas where you can hit points there everywhere so definitely statistics is one big data which is available and which is shareable and no uh, some are very paid also and that way but both the ways you can help indian data as well as the world data like indian data statistics are there you know, who are is exporting right now so that also has a potential showing that which countries are there and which things are going on so both ways it can work out very fine Ramni sir, may uh, I ask one thing? Yeah. Uh, Ramni sir, may I ask one thing? Uh, the, yes. The, the company's name you have taken. They they provide the data uh, exports from uh, uh, to other countries in uh, to other countries or they pro uh, and uh, import to uh, uh, to India. And do they provide the other countries are exporting to different countries? That, does that also happen? Uh, i i you know i'll need to get my export manager on line to answer your question in detail because uh, he handles this software in a great detail but I, what i would encourage you i'll put it in the chat box the uh, two uh, uh, you know so, uh, uh, websites which you can explore uh, and if you call them the the uh, 
re respective representative from these companies they will be happy to come to your office and explain to you how you yeah. should be using the software because they have a fee which they will charge and yeah, yeah. Uh, that is that is it the is nature it. of their business so because, uh, yeah sorry i i'll put it in the, in the uh, chat box you can take a look at it and then take it forward Thank one you. thing which comes to my mind uh, which uh, you know we can do from cosma is we can probably get uh, uh, get a uh, session to be shared by dollarbusiness.com or panjiba.com and they can actually share the entire details of which are the areas which uh, a, a switchboard manufacturer from india should target as far as overseas uh, is concerned and actually provide a list of uh, such potential customers also which uh, you know panel builders can take it and go forward yeah okay. so okay okay because uh, i wanted i, I actually uh, i i wanted to ask because i i already have a membership of a similar company that is volza v o l z a volza but they, and they are providing around 70 to 80 countries uh, data uh from within uh, i mean asian countries exporting to european countries and uh, some uh, asian countries buying from within each other so the, or uh, some gulf countries like they they are providing data for many many countries in between their business so, uh, even very less data of china also to whom they are exporting the same way so this is actually i wanted to share that's that's why i had asked we, we have two question here uh, mr ritesh ji please go ahead नमस्कार गुड मॉर्निंग मेरा सवाल भदौरिया जी के लिए है हाँ बताइए भदौरिया जी नमस्ते नमस्ते सर्टिफिकेशन के लिए जो आप बात कर रहे थे सो आई हैव नेवर एक्सपोर्टेड एनीथिंग अपार्ट फ्रॉम अ फ्यू टू भूटान और बांग्लादेश सो जो सर्टिफिकेशन की जो आप बात कर रहे हैं आर देर सर्टिफिकेशन एजेंसी Oh, and are there consultants who can help us in getting this certification and getting our quality as per their standard? No. Number one, if we talk of UL five zero eight A, UL is there already in Bangalore. They will help you out. They will give you a project okay. guideline, whatever you want them. They will give you. That is number one. Okay. Then another is IEC is a standards. If you want, I can send you IC somewhere. Just, uh, uh, just no, send I'm me. IC certified. I'm IC certified. Uh, your IC, no, no, IC certified. You must be IC certified six one forty nine. There is correct. There is one another IC standard for panel boards and all six zero two zero four dash one. IC six one four three nine is a short circuit. It's a test basically for your panel. Then IEC six zero two zero four dash one or exact number I'll tell you maybe but I think this is the exact number IEC six zero two zero four dash one. It is the standard of IEC for complete panel. It's not a testing standard. Whereas and also UL five zero eight A also is a standard for panel. In that there may be certain. Test certificate. It's a basically what component you use. Like if we say UL five zero eight A, then all the component. If you have to get your panel tested for UL certified panel, which is required for any export to USA, or most of the European countries are um, agreeing to that UL certifications and all. But uh, it is uh, without UL certification, you cannot move to USA at all. That's a, that's a problem. Now this UL 508A is a standard for what component you are using, whether they are UL certified or not. Then the, you have to buy from a UL, certi UL certified manufacturer, et cetera, et cetera, like that. So some like IEC 61439, as I told, it's a testing standard. You have got your panel tested, but the panel itself is not IEC certified. You have got a standard, you have got a uh, certification. Test of your panel. It's like so that. Are there consultants also no. available? Say, uh, say, for example. But why? Why do you want consultants? Direct, direct like, if you direct. approach UL, they are going to charge fees and all, and uh, they will work as a consultant for you. Okay. Okay. Uh, can I? They will, guide, they will guide. They will guide you everything. 
they will guide you everything you have to simply write to a letter to them you want because i know because you all as a different divisions and all in component line i know each and everybody but i'll try to find out uh, who is there in panel line mr ramani must be, be appreciable sir mr ramani must be knowing can... yeah you know somebody uh, in ul yeah i uh, we, yeah yeah i know people in ul i know people in intertech uh, also correct uh, correct so all these people are uh, they they are all in business and they will definitely come forward yeah. and ex- explain uh, whatever you require yeah. they'll take all your questions and yeah. uh, they will be very helpful no doubt about it i can i'll share the number of one person in uh, uh, ul as well as one person in intertech on the chat box right now mm-hmm. but can we have one seminar for, for, from ul people oh yes Ah, so be, that will be better that will be will specifically for ul anand ji it is their business they will be getting business from us <laughs> so they will love to have it they will love to come to seminar so don't worry about that uh, can we have question from arpit ji arpit ji unmute and uh, please speak uh, good afternoon sir this is anurup not arpit uh, from arpit ji account Uh, good afternoon to everyone honorable members uh, from vidyut control i would like to ask four questions if you please any expert can uh, answer uh, in this particular uh, uh, war situation in ukraine and russia the price of uh, commodities uh, presently we we are uh, also a victims right now we are we are not able to control the price hike and uh, uh, whatever projects we have we are facing problems in uh, our local markets also and uh, what about your experiences on export right now you are you are also having some price differences and how you are uh, managing it uh, uh, I, I say, uh, let me complete first sir uh, yeah. i have questions basically first is the price hike due to this war situation second question is uh, 6 to 10 crore uh, turn over uh, welded panels manufacturers right now we are welded pen, man, uh, panel manufacturer Uh, how do we scale up ourselves for uh, for export market uh, my third question is uh, uh, how we prepare a costing or calculations of the quotations for export products actually uh, for a beginner we do not have the co- quotation or the costing uh, Method. methods actually or any standards for the uh, export products for calculations and last question uh, which type of points if you want to highlight for all of our members to avoid frauds uh, in exports uh, for the beginners you know there, there are some frauds or traps also uh, which which we can identify initially that we do not want to go in the particular path so if if there is any help Uh, definitely anurup ji i think uh, four questions are done from your side so uh, yes, madhuriya ji you and manish ji can answer uh, two question two question i think uh, now what is your first question <laughs> price. about, uh, price, about price, price, price escalation price escalation in us ukraine war that will be affecting on that will be affecting only in indian oh, yeah. industry not in exports because exports everybody knows that price escalation is there like aluminium is there Russia is a Russia is a manufacturer of twenty percent aluminium in the world. Then there are certain other commodities. Since there is a shortage of aluminium, so Nalco and Indalco are taking advantage of that. They have increased their rates because if you discuss with Nalco or Indalco, they will say they have they are increasing. They will not sell in India. They will export it. There is a shortage. There is a shortage of MS mild steel, uh, like you see, and then all our big companies. Uh, what to talk of nalco nalco is a government of india company uh, they are actually killing msme control panel manufacturers to be very frank uh, one day uh, i think on 8th or 9th of march they increased the rates by 40 rupees a kg then after 10 days they decreased the rates by 30 rupees a kg something like that they have done like um, sale also is there everybody must be buy- buying steel now sale is a government of india company they are not able to control their own companies at all yes so but these if we talk to exports and all exports if we are exporting so whosoever is buying from you understand the situation 
world over that everybody there is an escalation clause. Freight cost is increasing. Uh, this uh, uh, supply disruptions are there. Containers are not available. Mr. Manish must be knowing all these things and all if he's in this line of um, um, doing this. Or whosoever is the export, whosoever is exporting, he knows there is a total supply disruption at present. But these supply disruptions are Temporary. not affecting rates in exports. Because exports, everybody knows there is a supply disruption. Whether they get it from China, they get it from USA, they get it from uh, Taiwan or South Korea, etc., or they get it from Germany. Everybody raises an increase by five to ten percent during la five minimum three percent to maximum ten percent during last one month or so. And then another thing I tell you, very important point: this war has done one thing. People have lost confidence in communist economies. That so-called uh, like uh, China is there or Russia is there. So whosoever is dictated by one single person, there is no democracy. So India has having advantage now. As Mr. Manish has already told, this is the right time. Because people world over have lost confidence in China and Russia. Russia, of course, is never a competition to India, but China was. China is still is a competition. But people are losing faith in uh, this single-party dictatorship or like that. So here, India is having a very big advantage to export. Now, what was your next question? Yeah? How to upscale, how to upscale their validated panel business? Uh, sir, uh, we are validated panel manufacturer right now. No, Mr. Ramney, Mr. Ramney, Mr. Ramney will, Mr. Ramney will uh, reply to that. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, all I have to say is that uh, all all uh, uh, purchases are dictated by the customer. So, uh, if you want to hold on to welded panels, then you will have to identify customers who will be happy to buy welded panels. I was actually surprised that uh, in some of uh, you know my LinkedIn posts there were. Uh, comments from Australian panel builders who said, uh, why would anybody go for modular enclosures? So there are uh, different types of customers in the world. Some people swear by the ambassador car. Some people swear by the Honda city. So you have to decide uh, what is it that uh, you want. And if you are, uh, uh, you know, wanting to get into export, I mean, my personal advice is get into modular because that is the future. If you look at uh, if you look at uh, Schneider, ABB, Siemens, uh, LNT, and any of these uh, uh, companies uh, in in India itself, you will find that none of them are into welded uh, switchboards. So every time we have to keep looking at what is the future. Where will I be three years from now? Where will I be five years from now? And then we have to plan our business strategy. So uh, I think getting into um, modular is, is very basic to get into exports because number one, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, this, is, uh, this, this, this is something which the customer likes, they are uh, very comfortable with, and therefore it makes more sense for us to align ourselves with what the customer wants. That's my take on the subject. Correct, sir. Correct, sir. Uh, third question is of how to calculate costing uh, that I believe Malaysia is. Can you help uh, how CH agent can uh, help them? Yes, sir. Yeah, firstly, I am not a CH agent, but CH is something where you will be doing your clearing work. CH is not yeah. one who does the costing and all, but yeah, the basic here is about first your like what you do in the same way it is for export, but yeah, here the freight comes in, the insurance comes in, and other uh, incentives what you are getting that you will count in yourself. So that's how you will able to make your invoice like like a costing of yours and what are your profit accordingly. And that's what, what you will give to your uh, party according to what he wants. Like the, so that's how you will be able to make your invoices and do that. And fourth question, what you are saying about the fraud and all those things. I think the new exporter has to understand that he can't export to any inquiry coming in like that. But yeah, when the payment terms comes, you have to put in either the advance part or the LC part which goes through your bank only. So that's how you can save yourself. You can't be exporting without any payment coming in or without any guarantee or like that. 
so that's where the fraud comes in where they that happens but if you do it by lc terms and also some advance and whatever you feel like so that is how you will able to save on that fraud like otherwise it's i don't think that's that much uh, a problem there that's what it is uh, sanjeev kinnawar ji next question from you unmute unmute yourself sir yeah thank you my question to manish ji and our product hsn product code is 85371 000 under mm-hmm. this code how much export has happened in the uh, last in this current financial year or last financial year and uh, how much gst government of india has collected under this code? so that we will come mm-hmm. to know the value of business in that all statistics as well as, uh, mm, the statistics part are a different companies who will be providing that as well as government of india statistics are there and also the private what other parties also told about two three companies where it is a paid thing also you will get in a cd everything concerning your hs code so that is two pay part here paid and unpaid also both should, has to be considered so that to arrive at a conclusive decision yeah which are the countries what is exported at what fob price and what is the per costing and that also comes in in that so that data is paid as well as unpaid that would be that would be covered like that so you will have to spare that thing to give that hs code and then can come back ke yeah what has to be done and what are the two parts to it paid as well as the unpaid part where you will get the data on that yeah. now one more so question to maduri yes. aj yes. sir uh, we all want to know how you accidentally fell into this business of making support <laughs> <laughs> it's a, no, no, it's a different. It's a uh, no, no. It's a altogether different subject. Maybe give me about one or two months time because now I'll be going to USA and all, and we'll be back in um, June. That will be that will come under the heading of uh, uh, entrepreneurship. It's a long subject. It may take about an hour and a half. And better is Sanjeev ji, uh, better person to do to tell you about me will be Vijay Sahita. <laughs> But that's it. I'll I'll take this uh, I'll take this matter in a other forum, not this because this is export related to export. But there I'll give another lecture on entrepreneurship. Not for you and all, but the persons who are below forty-five years of age. Okay. <laughs> Restricted to all persons below forty-five years of age. Yeah. Coming back to our subject, sir. Uh, basically, uh, our today's seminar was, I think, just an introductory seminar. Anand, but there is one question. Can we take that before you uh, go on that? Anand, yeah. you got muted. Uh, Tarun, bhai. Uh, Anil, yeah. can we take a question from Tarun Bhai before you go on the final? I, I don't have any question, but I want to say something. But Tarun has to say first. Uh, Tarun Bhai, kindly. Thank you. Uh, I I wanted to ask Mr. Manish, what is the what kind of support EPIC is providing to the exporters? EPCG, you mean? I EPCG, sorry, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm yeah, that. Yeah. There are various government schemes and policy in the import export policies. which help you to achieve one scheme which is i look into your industry is that where you require capital goods say machineries to make that panels or controllers or whatever you are doing you require some imported machinery best machinery in the world if you want to have that you can import that under that scheme where exports you have to take a uh, export commitment of six times the value of the duty saved like so that's what it is like but it has to be entered as a as a registered contract with dgft uh, book is maintained you get a license and against that all shipping bills you have to show yeah i have this done say 10 lakh 10 lakh 10 lakh let's say 2 crores is the value and you have committed that and that 3 or 4 years that you give are given you complete that against that so first you will able to get to import that first because then only you will go to export so that's how it does scheme works and there are various schemes here as well as what i said also policy decisions can be changed in the sense of where your industry says yes i want these types of hurdles are there i want these to be rem- removed or this to be had so you we that interaction also would help you so there are three four parameters where all buttons have to click so that in every manner you can the industry can standard uh, upgrade itself and get to that world standard to become really competitive 
and when mr baduria ji himself is doing that i think there is a tremendous uh, uh, possibilities here and all should have that thing rather being also baduria has said about uh, worrying about uh, white skin and all those things are there with us we are changed now it's a new india and we should look in that manner then definitely and confidently you can do with that along with cosma i suppose cosma should be in the middle of this thing because where the small and medium or whatever msme uh, companies are there definitely you can't be spending lots of money on that because mm-hmm. it is a time tested method where it is going to to reach that is going to take you some time also so maybe that all things could be coordinated and uh, with all functions here i think that could be done here do they do they support for the like to find markets for export or that uh, associations are there like um, yeah like cosma there is also export promotion councils are there in india okay. Okay. There are different councils there, like EP, uh, Engineering Export Commercial Council. I think your things would come under that, I suppose. So yeah, councils yeah. also have that inquiry. Yeah, yeah. So councils, Export Commercial Councils are there where you have to become a member of them also. This is your association. This is the Export Commercial Councils are there, like Electronics, like uh, yeah, Engineering Council. There are lots many Gem and Jewelry Councils where where they are doing that uh, fairs also, and as well as inquiries also come through them. so many things are to be evolved so it's a wholesome game and there are change of events where you have to tick pass every point there then only you'll able to make it possible maybe that information has to be at one place where whatever things are there somebody should be there to look into that thing and put it across to all the members as a yes. yeah, yeah. Uh, like a framework like of thing i and also the fairs what i said is very important because china also grew through that mainly that gonzhou fair canton fair was the pivoting factor for china i tell you so we need to look into fairs and things very properly and now people don't go there for fun there are people who are specifically go there have there and do all those things which are online offline both right now because of covid it was there so the same way what you said your fair is also coming up so same we it, it has to be internationalized also for the country also that's what Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, over to Anand Bhai. Uh, now, actually, the points uh, raised or told in these seminars are so precious, but those are only the uh, heads of the subject. So I think uh, there needs to be one more seminar or uh, multiple seminars on different, different, different subjects only for the exports. So Manish also is having a lot of subject to talk about. and he has just uh, told uh, headings of the subjects so uh, manish can you have one complete seminar on the administrative part of the exports uh, uh, will it be okay for you if i organize say after 15 days yeah i am there to help you out sir i have no problem and uh, being a professional i can help it in every manner that's not a thing and i would also like indian industries and indian things to exports so yes i am there available for you sir that's not a problem but people need to understand to make it a, a proper framework and all steps has to be done starting from an ic code like that's a abcd ic is the main thing where you get started first first things so everything has to go step wise also here so definitely sir any time uh, wherever you want i am there available sir no problem on that yeah, so we look forward yeah. to you as a consultant for yeah, our no association problem, okay no problem. and uh, yeah, we yeah, make uh, with you we can make one checklist uh, for the exporters uh, uh, in consultation with the other members who are already exporting like bahaduria ji or there are some members yeah. we can make a com- uh, combined list of ch- checklist for the exporters so they have to yeah. just complete that checklist and the uh, export will yes. be easy so that thing yeah, that would be better uh, and also the fairs we are talking about we can have a consortium uh, for that fairs also so ek hi aadmi jayega will promote all the control panel manufacturers over there in paid basis or something like that i think ramani ji uh, we can have one more one uh, more seminar on this session those who are interested sure uh, Uh, and Laura ji, आप कुछ बोल नहीं रहे. What is your experience for last fifty years, uh, Sanjeev ji? Sanjeev Laura ji, uh, unmute you please. मैं तो बहुत देर से बोलने की कोशिश कर रहा था. 
आप हाथ ऊपर नहीं किया ना और म्यूट भी रहे सर आपके पास इतना लो ही जाएगा ना कि हमको लगा कि ये भाई मिस्टेक हो गया है अन्य प्लीज गो सर संजीव भाई प्लीज गो तो गुड गुड आफ्टरनून एवरीबॉडी हां गुड आफ्टरनून जी माय फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन टू मिस्टर भदौरिया इज हम्म हाउ डिड द फर्स्ट अटेम्प्ट क्लिक लाइक व्हेन यू स्टार्टेड एक्सपोर्टिंग व्हाट वाज द फर्स्ट इवेंट हाउ इट केम इनटू योर बिजनेस how did you attend it and how did you get the first breakthrough um uh, it was somewhere around i'll i'll uh, strictly speak to uh, speak to the first attempt on the otherwise it will become a long lecture of one hour or so <laughs> some mistakes some you abhi ka awaaz aa rahi hai मोटरसाइकिल पास में थी जी एस डी थी <laughs> तो बहुत ज्यादा मतलब शुरू शुरू में क्या ये एम्बेसी जी विजिट करना होता था इन नाइनटी वन सेंगर आई realize that india may not be my field to work on because everybody wherever i go they talk about price this thing that thing and x y z other things and all ki wo aadmi 5 rupaye ka deta hai aap 4.5 rupaye ka de do bhaiya humne kaha to possible nahi hai to chalo theek hai export karte hain export mein gaye to different kyunki pehle to sochte the ki bhai us jo hai अंग्रेज है सफेद स्किन है पता नहीं कर पाएंगे मार के भगा देंगे तो हमने कहा चलो इधर से ईस्ट से शुरू करते हैं थोड़े अपने जैसे भाई है भैया पीली स्किन ही है तो हमने थाईलैंड मलेशिया इंडोनेशिया अपने तो थोड़े से मिलते जुलते हैं इंग्लिश भी नहीं बोलते तो ठीक ठाक ही होंगे कोई ना कोई अपना भाई हिंदुस्तानी तो मिल ही जाएगा हिंदी बोलने वाला तो खैर we have written lot of letters in malay sorry the thailand and all incidentally one person came he was a um, uh, distributor for socomat insulators etc to pehle to ye tha ki humne use catalog bheja letter bheja 15 20 din mein uska jawab aaya fir hum use letter bhejenge x y z phone milna to bahut hi mushkil tha ab to matlab बुक कराना पड़ता था तब पोजीशन ये थी कि बुक कराओ और उसके बाद एस टी डी कॉल एंड ऑल नंबर आएगा तो खैर गए वहां पे उससे मिले हमने कहा चलो ठीक है बिजनेस हुआ नहीं हुआ थाईलैंड घूम तो आएंगे ही तो नाइनटी टू में चले गए तो खैर द थिंग्स क्लिक उसने कहा कि आप ये ये प्रोडक्ट बना सकते हो लुकिंग एट दी सुको मैक्री एंजेट ऑल हमने कहा बना देंगे हम तो आप चूहा कहोगे तो चूहा बना देंगे बिल्ली कहोगे तो बिंदी बना देंगे हमें एक मोल्ड ही तो बनाना है डीएमसी बनाना और मोल्ड करना है तो वी दैट्स हाउ वी हैव स्टार्टेड बिकॉज इसी इस मामले में एक और चीज मैं यहाँ पर पॉइंट आउट करना चाहता हूँ कि हम एक्चुअली हम क्या है हमारे कुछ फिक्स आइडियाज है कि हम इस तरह के पैनल बनाते हैं आप बेसिकली अपना इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर देखो ना आप जंक्शन बॉक्स बना सकते हो एक्स बना सकते हो वाई बना सकते हो आप अपने फॉरगेट अबाउट वन थिंग कि आप सिर्फ पैनल बॉडी बनाते हो लाइक आई विल गिव यू अनदर एग्जांपल। वी आर नोन वर्ल्ड वाइड फॉर इंसुलेटर्स बट नाउ यू विल बी सरप्राइज अवर नेक्स्ट ईयर सेल विल बी कमिंग फ्रॉम ऑयल एंड ड्रिलिंग फील्ड नाउ वी आर डूंग सेवेंटी सेवेंटी करोर सेवेंटी फाइव करोर नाउ so next year we have got a order of 35 crores from oil and rig business nothing doing from insulator also we are molding injection molding or compression molding now we have to make a, a, a certain part in injection molding which has to go drilling down the rig and all so what's the problem if we can injection mold insulator we can injection mold that thing also So it has taken some time, six months and all R and D etc. And all. there are some disturbances coming. So don't stick to one field. Just see your setup, complete setup. What other thing you can make? Sanju sir, आपके आगे क्या हो जा रहा है? थोड़ा जी आपके पास क्या हो जा रहा है? Yeah. So you can don't stick to one thing. in related field backward integration or upward integration just see what other things you can have. forget about uh, 
control panel line. The again, uh, again, I'll give you an example of one company. Uh, I think Mr. Ramani must be knowing. Fimer, you know Mr. Ramani? Bangalore? Yes, of course. They are I about two years, they are about two years old company. Hmm. In Bangalore. Yes. Hmm. They have uh, recent this is an Italian company. Hmm. Fimer. You will be surprised in two years' time, the company has grown extremely big in solar panel line. I don't know the reason behind it. So what are we doing? A company coming from Italy becomes that much big in two years' time. I'm really surprised because, because why I know this? Because order we, what we receive from Fimer, et cetera, and other parties, et cetera, who are in the solar line, I'm surprised by their growth rate. It's a two years old company. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Can I give another example? Uh, yeah. Uh, Raycom is a company which huh. uh, uh, manufactures uh, certain products like uh, your uh, medium voltage, uh, you know, kits, uh, etc. Correct. Correct. But they, in their uh, stall in Middle East electricity, they hadn't uh, exhibited any of those uh, MB kits. They are sourcing in the vicinity of Mumbai junction boxes and uh, different types of boxes and enclosures and yeah. they are uh, marketing it all over the Middle East. They, yes. their, their export sales, if I'm not mistaken, is around 250 crores. Very correct. Uh, so, I mean, it, it, it is a question of how we find the need and then we are able to match our capability to the need out there. Yes, correct. Uh, in fact, uh, even Control uh, uh, Connectwell company when they saw that the reverse was possible, they started control grow and they started importing items and uh, uh, you know using it uh, to satisfy the need in India for those specialized uh, products. So mm -hmm. it's a question of matching need and uh, capability. Yeah. Uh, the so seminar. Another, oh, no, yes, sorry. Continue, 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 sir. Continue. Another question to Mr. Badoria. Yeah. The exports, what you are doing, is it uh, basically against LC or against cash payment or like uh, 60 days? No, it depends actually. It depends. We are, a, we are quite old in this line, like last 30 years or so. So we have our distributor in Spain, Germany, and all. Most of the European countries, then Far East countries, and all Malaysia, Indonesia, Singapore, etc. So we we'll need to, we have got a perfect relationship with them. We send them as soon as it reaches within one month, they pay the amount. And then our uh, biggest uh, purchaser at present in the USA, we are exporting about 30 crores or so, 25 to 30 crores. Next year, as I told you, we'll be exporting, instead of 25, we'll be exporting about 50 crores or so to USA. So that is, but that is a uh, we are very close to, we are like a family and all with that company because we are dealing with them since 2007. So not an issue with payments and all. Even if I require payment at 12 o'clock at night, I have to give them simply a WhatsApp call. I require the money. They'll transfer the money. And I know that if I say they'll give the money, right on uh, next day morning, it will be in our account. Good. Good. Next is my answer to Mr. Ankit of uh, Vidyut Control when he talked about the exports of the welded structure, welded uh, cubicles. Mm -hmm. So basically what I feel that exports of welded structure is very difficult and I don't know whether people will agree also or for, for that or not, because you have to do surface treatment of the electrical panels. How mm -hmm. do you do the surface treatment of a very huge, you know, structure? That's a question. So basically I think modular panels are only going to get success for exports and we must concentrate on modular structure only. And regarding the consortium, what we were talking about, that uh, all of us together uh, export. So what I feel that COSMA is uh, an association where all of us are there, COSMA is ours. So even without COSMA association, some one of us, like say Ramni ji or Pyrotech or Advance or anybody, big panel builders who are already exporting, they can take the order and they can pass it on to us like share, we can share some orders, all of us. And mm. Modutech, like Modutech makes, uh, so similar panels are there. So Modutech, uh, they do the fabrication work 
pass it on to the others, get the panels made, and then exporting can be done by Modutech or anybody else. I think this is the solution what I feel. And that must be very correct, appropriate. Sir, correct. correct, correct, sir. So, uh, Ramani ji, aap uh, zara expert comments about this? Yeah, it's a uh, it's an uh, idea which was uh, expressed by uh, uh, Pyrotech uh, also in the past, and uh, it it is a very doable uh, uh, you know matter. And uh, it, it, why? Because the end customer uh, he wants to have uh, the look and feel of the product uniformly. So unless you standardize of the enclosure, you will not get that uniform look and feel. Uh, Sanjeev uh, Loda ji, you will have to kindly mute. Yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, so, uh, so it, as an idea, it's a good idea. In fact, uh, since there is so much of uh, interest which is coming up in exports, uh, I would also recommend that Cosma uh, could send out a Google form to every member, asking them to fill up certain basic data in terms of, uh, you know, what is the product, what is their interest in exports, what is it that they are doing right now in exports. What are the questions regarding exports? And then for those of them who reply to this Google form, we can form a separate uh, uh, WhatsApp group. And in that separate WhatsApp group, we can share a lot of information which could help. Like uh, uh, Sanjeev Kinnavarji asked uh, as to how do I go about my exports? What is the first step I have to take? What is the second step I have to take? And there are companies uh, like uh, Anand Singhalji, uh, Advance in... Uh, uh, in Delhi, then you have NIE in Bangalore, New India Electricals, all of them who are already exporting quite a bit of switch gears, switchboards. And uh, one uh, aspect which I would like to uh, you know, bring to the attention of all our uh, members is that if you take Schneider products, if you take ABB products, you take Siemens products, if they are selling it at 100 rupees in India, they are selling it at 125 to 140 rupees overseas. So you straight away have a handicap as far as the switchgear uh, price is concerned when you're uh, uh, looking at exporting from India. And uh, therefore, I think it makes a lot of sense for switchboard manufacturers to export. In fact, next uh, uh, program, you'll have to invite people uh, who are in switchboard business and who are already exporting to share their knowledge, share their experiences so that other switchboard manufacturers can pick up clues from that and then get into this uh, more profitable line of business. Uh, uh, great, sir. Uh, Ramani ji, uh, this Google Forms idea and forming a different WhatsApp group for export is a really good, a good idea. So we can do it immediately uh, and start the next level of this uh, seminar. Uh, so let us do the first Google Forms and collecting the... Uh, Sanju Kinnavarji has a more question. Uh, Anand bhai. Ah, yes, Sanju, 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 Sanju Kinnavarji has a question. Sanju, it's not, it is not the question. I just want uh, Madhurya to uh, repeat the name of that uh, Italy company. Fimer. Uh, Madhurya ji, can you repeat that solar company which grew in two years' time? Fimer, F I M E R. Fimer. F I M E R. F-I-M-E-R. Uh, Anand, you are muted. Uh, kindly unmute. Uh, be yes. Before creating any new group on WhatsApp, we already have one export union group on Telegram, yes. which uh, which was created with the interest of uh, export business for Cosma. Yes. So, uh, do, do we feel if we can add more members on that? Yes, we can. So, we'll uh, see, Vichal, you are the boss for that. So, you decide and uh, start with this work and form the group, form the uh, Google form. So, this is the cue okay. for us. And already we are around 12.40 here. So uh, this is only first part of our export seminar. So there will be many, two, three, four like that uh, as per the, the subject asked for. So I'll uh, just uh, transfer my, uh, uh, transfer this mic to Ramani sir. Ramani sir, can you have a vote of thanks for this seminar, uh, please? Okay, sure. Hanumanthi uh, sir is there. Yeah. Hanumanthi sir is there or not? Hanumanthi no, no, so he so he told me that he will not. So please. Okay, okay, okay. He's there, he's there, but he's there. <laughs> he told that me also, but he's there. Yeah, I am there, but I, I have not attended the pool since okay. I was covering. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, uh, to we start. I pilot the contract. Yeah. <laughs> 
I, I think my first thanks will go to Anand for having come out with this uh, thought of, uh, you know, uh, encouraging our uh, panel builders to look at exports and uh, organizing the seminar for exports. I think that's uh, absolutely the need of the hour. And uh, thanks, Anand, for doing this. You have been very, very creative, very, very, very caring and empathetic of all the needs of uh, our members. And uh, hats off to you. Uh, you're really, really special for Cosma. My uh, second thanks goes to Badurya Saab, who has uh, shared, you know, I, it, it's absolutely uh, mind boggling to understand how in 1990, a company which has uh, grown with uh, in, in just 100 square feet uh, shed is uh, today 90,000 square feet. And then they are planning another 2 lakh square feet. And it's an Indian company. It's, it's amazing. And uh, uh, the way he went about explaining uh, how he went about exports. Uh, it's, it's a great inspiration for all of us. Thank you, Badurya Saab. Uh, you will always remain uh, a source of major uh, you know, inspiration for all of us at your age. You're saying that you're going to US uh, for uh, 20 days and uh, uh, you know, on that, uh, that zeal and energy which you have is, uh, is, is, is really, really amazing. Uh, Manish Vora Saab, uh, thank you so much for uh, having joined and uh, elaborated on uh, whatever you've said in terms of uh, uh, exports, uh, the kind of uh, inputs which are available and uh, the statistics as you highlighted is the major aspect of uh, how one should start uh, identifying market bases uh, as well as customer segments uh, and, and your Retreating every time that you are there for Cosma is uh, a very nice, uh, encouraging part of uh, this journey. And I, I also request you to be part of our uh, Cosma export uh, WhatsApp group because uh, you know whatever questions you comes up there, you could uh, you could lot of things, You could also share your uh, inputs with us on that. Uh, Sanjeev uh, Kinavarji, uh, your uh, you know eagerness to look at uh, how to export uh, is is something which uh, you know resonates with uh, all of us in uh, Cosma and uh, being the president when you, you know the number of questions you have asked and the uh, uh, amount of interest you have shown, I'm sure uh, like Fima grew very sharply in exports in solar. We would hear the story of Arrow also growing very sharply over the next two years in exports. And we look forward to hearing more about this uh, from you as we go forward. All the other participants who participated, like Sanjeev Lodaji and uh, Deepesh and uh, Anurupji, and all of them, you know, it just shows the kind of interest uh, which is there uh, amongst panel builders to really look at more profitable markets. I think, you know, that is the bottom line. We all of us want to look at more and more profitable, uh, you, you know, markets, and this uh, seminar has really contributed towards uh, showing some light at the end of the tunnel. And uh, I think this has to be taken forward. And Vishalji, as usual, very very uh, cooperative as far as uh, you know, facilitating this kind of a webinar is concerned, and now readily agreeing for starting the. Uh, uh, you know, export group on WhatsApp uh, from Cosma with the Google form uh, being the initiative, uh, initial step which has to be taken. Uh, I think uh, no words can can thank him enough for for his consistency in the way he has been, uh, you know, contributing to Cosma. And above all, of course, uh, Satish Kazibai at uh, uh, you know the the kind of interest uh, and commitment what he has to Cosma, you know, uh, always being there, participating, and, you know, showing us the way in terms of uh, how we should be going forward. It's, uh, it's a great uh, blessing for all of us. So, and thank you, everyone. Uh, I think consistently, we have been having more than 30 participants uh, in this uh, webinar, and uh, that itself is a great motivator. Thank you all. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you everyone. Thank you. On this note, uh, we can conclude the meeting.